right, so we're sitting here with John from Silencer Co. and he's going to tell us a little bit about the silencer testing equipment that they're using here at Silencer Co. John, if you could uh, just kind of explain kind of the basis of how you guys came up with the software and what sure. you guys are using it for. Originally, we started with some of the industry standard stuff, the uh, BNK2209 meter, uh, which was made in the 50s and still currently isn't in production. Uh, with those old meters, uh, you would have to calibrate it, set it up for shooting, take a shot, read the meter, write it down, push a button to reset it, and do that again until you had 10 shots. Well, when we started into this business, we realized that it was going to take a lifetime to test uh, just loads of cans and then to evaluate that data quickly. Well, we had a physicist friend, uh, an applied physicist friend, that uh, introduced us to LabVIEW. LabVIEW is what all the rocket scientists use. It's what uh, all the car manufacturers use to measure impacts uh, far greater than what we do. Um, and so we looked into LabVIEW, contacted the LabVIEW folks that came out, sold us the software. And then we developed this uh, application using their toolkits inside. And what this uh, application does for us is it enables us to not have to reset the meter, to only calibrate once in a testing session for many, many cans. And uh, basically all that happens is, is we write the name of the test down, we go up to the microphone, and we're able to fire. And this automatically triggers and samples and records the data for uh, future reference and future analysis. And uh, we can shoot about one, sec uh, one shot per second and uh, see exactly what the average is coming out to on the fly. We can see what the average of the previous test was right here on the fly. And uh, as soon as we're done testing, we close it. It stores automatically. It stores a spreadsheet for us that we can open up at any time. Awesome. So what this did was it took down you know, what was taking a whole day's worth of just data compiling for doing like 20 silencers. It takes us down to minutes enables us to really expedite our uh, R&D. Very cool. Well, I appreciate the, uh, the definition of the system. Um, how long have you guys been using this software? Well, we designed the software and started using it probably about a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, we used the old school way for you know about six months in the first product or so. And that old method you're talking about is you've got big equipment you're using to, to test with that as well. Yeah, it's right? not necessarily big, it's just a meter about this size. Okay. The deal is it's more susceptible to temperature changes, it's a little bit more finicky, it only has a, uh, it has a very small window of decibel range, so you have to you know, remember how loud you're going to be, so you have to click down, click up, it's really difficult to use. Where this has the whole gamut, it has a 100 decibel uh, dynamic range. Well now, how does this uh, apply to an outdoor environment other than kind of the indoor stuff that you guys are using here? Well the good news is, is that uh, all test data currently is being tested via a peak signal mm -hmm. and in here there is no interference with the peak signal. Now there is an interference with the average signal or the duration of the gunshot. So it'll sound bigger and louder to our ears in here. But according to the meter and according to the peak signals, it still sees the same peak. We validated both our outdoor tests and our indoor tests. Um, so if the standard continues to just take the peak, mm -hmm. this, this it, testing indoors is fine. Now you mentioned duration. How does that come into play with what you guys have done? And is duration calculated into what you're doing here, or it's not? But it, it it's not a standard in our industry okay. at this time. Uh, but we are working on resetting the standards of this industry, both in mic placement, adding more mics into the play, and yeah, the duration here. The the human ear hears. Uh, it'll respond to. For example, if you had a something at 106 or 120 decibels that was really, really quick, something at 110 decibels that was a second long, we're going to perceive the 110 decibels as louder than the 120 decibels. Right. And uh, so there is, there are some scientific things it's called A duration, B duration, that we'd like to employ into the system as well. The nice thing with this system is you can actually collect all that data at the same time. Very so good. you don't have to have more meters. Yeah, exactly. So this is just the traditional system where you're using one microphone and that placement from the yeah. shot itself is the meter kind of the standard. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Um, I noticed are these kind of sound panels that you guys yeah. have correct. Put this on is the treated panel? to be kind of a lab environment or a sound studio environment. Mm -hmm. It's not entirely killed, but it does reduce a lot of that uh, uh, long sustained echoes and, or short echoes uh, quickly. So it great. gives us a little bit better feedback. Um, although still, if you want a really clean sound, you either need to go to an anecdotal chamber or you need to go outdoors. Okay. Well, great. I appreciate you walking us through it. Yeah, no problem.
Thank you very much.